Hello and welcome to today's lesson on the Big Bang Model, which is part of the astrophysics topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at trying to understand the Big Bang Theory as the current consensus for the origin of the universe. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to recognise the Big Bang Theory in relation to Hubble's law for cosmological redshift, understand the evidence for the Big Bang model including redshift, the CMB and the abundance of hydrogen and helium, and finally look at the role of dark energy in the expansion of the universe, which links into the following part of the AQA A-Level Physics Specification 3.9.3.2 Hubble's law. Now the light is emitted from distant uh, galaxies and it travels towards us, which if you can see in the following image. Now we interpret this wave as electromagnetic radiation. Now this electromagnetic wave travels towards the Earth to be observed, but as it travels through space, the space in between the galaxy and the Earth expands and this causes the wave to expand with it. So this makes the wave have a longer wavelength than it should do, so it makes the radiation appear redder. Now the further away a galaxy is, the more expansion that takes place, the redder the wave. Now the expansion of the universe can only happen where there's little matter in between the galaxies of our universe in the voids. Now just to clarify, our solar system is not expanding due to the gravitational forces of the sun and planets opposing this expansion, and the Milky Way is again not expanding due to the gravitational forces of the stars in it opposing the expansion. Now if the wavelength of the wave expanded so much that it could expand into the infrared red region, it would be in fact invisible to humans. So this means to detect distant galaxies who have redshifted a great deal, infrared telescopes are used instead of visible ones. Now this means that the expansion of our universe is causing objects to move away from one another, which is an extremely important idea. So it's causing these objects to recede. Now the further away the objects are, the more space there is to expand between them and the greater the recession velocity. This is Hubble's law. Now in theory it's possible for distant galaxies to be receding so fast from us that the light will never reach us because their recession velocity is greater than the speed of light. This would make the receding object invisible to human detection. Now it's very very important that this indicates that we live in an observable universe which is the part of the universe in which we can detect ob an object via electromagnetic radiation. Now we can actually measure the size of the observable universe via the redshift but it's actually impossible to estimate the absolute size of the universe. So it's important to know that the observable universe is a sphere with a radius equal to the maximum distance that light can travel during the existence of the universe. So we believe that the observable universe is 46 to 47 billion light years across. However, we only think the universe is 13.7 billion years old. Now the difference in values is due to the expansion of the universe increasing the size of the observable universe. So just to clarify, via redshift Hubble derived, the further away a galaxy is, the greater the redshift observed and the faster the object is moving away from us. So this allowed physicists to speculate if all objects are moving away from each other now were they once all condensed to one region of space. So the proposed model to explain the expansion of the universe was the Big Bang Theory. Now the Big Bang Theory says the universe had a beginning. The universe started off very hot and very dense, possibly infinitely hot and dense, and has been expanding ever since. All matter was created at the start, so the matter density of the universe is currently going down. So it was postulated that the force drive and expansion happen at the moment of creation. So you can see our universe is getting larger and larger and matter is spreading out in our universe. So in the beginning, before the Big Bang, there was nothing. Time and space did not exist. There was nothing to observe or any frame of time to reference anything to. So before the Big Bang, there was nothing to consider. The universe then comes into existence and even though we call this a Big Bang, it wasn't a bang. It just happens that we associate a bang with something happening in energy being released. In reality, all of matter just slipped into existence. So all of matter, everything in the universe was concentrated into an area smaller than one atom. So at the Big Bang, all of time, space, energy and matter was created. The universe is super dense and super hot. Now this is the fundamental principle of the hot Big Bang model. All of the universe was created in a super hot, super dense instant. Then the universe goes through a super fast exponential expansion called inflation 
fraction after 10 to the minus 43 seconds. So in a fraction of a second, the universe increases in size from an atom to the size of a pineapple. So you've got the universe undergoing exponential expansion called inflation. So the universe cools down when this happens. Now we believe inflation happened to allow for the galaxies to form in the universe as quantum mechanical fluctuations produce a density imbalance which leads to galaxies and voids forming. Now after one second, electrons and protons and neutrons form in the universe, but it's still too hot for these particles to form atoms as it's about 10 to the 11 degrees uh, Celsius. So as a result, the universe continues to cool and expand. So after three minutes, a rapidly cooling and expanding universe allows the neutrons and protons to clump together to make nuclei. Now electrons are still free in the universe and there's no such thing currently as electromagnetic radiation. The universe is still dark, which we call the cosmological dark age. So matter and energy are coupled together, so energy cannot flow through the universe. Now after 300,000 years, the electrons combine with the nuclei to form atoms, which is mostly hydrogen and helium, which is still roughly as today in our universe currently. The universe now has an average temperature of 10,000 degrees Celsius, and electromagnetic radiation can finally shine, and this is the furthest back we can see in time. So this allows for radiation to be emitted for the first time, which as you'll be aware, produces something called the cosmic microwave background. Now this image can be found in all directions of the universe. It's been extremely redshifted and has a peak temperature of 3 Kelvin. Now it's important to know that the cosmic microwave background can only have been formed at the, with the Big Bang model. Now another thing is that atoms then begin to form. Now the temperature of the universe is high enough for 25% of the hydrogen of the universe to fuse into helium, but these conditions are only present for enough time to convert 25% because the universe is continuing to expand. So the abundance of hydrogen and helium can only be explained by the Big Bang model. So here's an image of the cosmic microwave background. The universe aged as it was 300,000 years old. The red spots show areas of high density on temperature which become galaxies and blue spots show areas of low density and temperature which become voids. Now after 1 billion years, hydrogen found in clouds clumps together under gravity. So we get the first protostars and proto galaxies. The stars ignite for the first time, creating areas of high temperature but the average temperature in the universe is now minus 200 degrees Celsius as our universe has become extremely clumpy. So we're now undergoing our first star stellar cycle in the universe. Now this forms massive stars which quickly move through the stellar cycle and implode via supernovae, which produces many quasars in our universe. Now after 10 billion years, the first stars die out and spew newly heavier formed elements such as carbon and oxygen in their death, and the process of new stars and planets continues to form again, and the universe continues to cool. So the second star, a stellar star cycle occurs, and the universe becomes even more clumpy, so we've now got regions of galaxies and voids in our universe. So now, 13.7 billion years after the Big Bang, we are currently here with many stars, galaxies and other objects formed. So the universe has cooled to a chilly average temperature of minus 270 degrees Celsius. So we can see a timeline of the universe with the following graphic. We had a very hot, very dense universe at the beginning which was very uniform. We now have a cold, much larger universe which is clumpy with areas of matter and areas of empty space. It's important to remember the the early universe was very hot, and very dense and very uniform, and in addition the observable universe is very small when it was very young. Now there are three things needed for a scientific model to be accepted, a testable idea, a mathematical proof and experimental evidence. This is the same for every model in physics, even the hot Big Bang model. So the idea of the Big Bang theory was provided by George Gamow in the 1950s. The mathematical proof was provided by Stephen Hawking in the 1960s, however we must consider what evidence Evidence we have to accept the hot Big Bang model. Now the first evidence which provided evidence of the model was redshift. Cosmological redshift is due to the space in between galaxies expanding. This causes the galaxies to recede from each other with a recession velocity. Now the me mechanism behind expansion in the universe is the Big Bang. The production of all matter and energy in the universe produced an expansion force. So this has caused our galaxies to move away from each other. However, more than one piece of evidence is needed to provide a model. So working in Bell Labs in New Jersey, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson were experimenting with a super sensitive horn antennae originally built to detect radio waves bouncing off 
air weather satellites. So to measure these faint radio waves, they had to eliminate all recognizable interference from the receiver. Now they'd remove the effects of radar and radio and suppressed interference from the heat in the receiver itself. However, when they reduced when they produced their data, they found a low mysterious noise that persisted in their receiver. So this is an image that they get, and it was a hundred more times more intense than they expected, was evenly spread over the night sky and was present day and night. Now this this was certain that the radiation did not come from the Earth, the Sun, or even our galaxy. Now the interference was found in the microwave spectrum of the electromagnetic spectrum. So both of the scientists concluded that the noise was coming from outside our own galaxy, although they were not aware of any microwave source that would account for it. So what source was present everywhere in the universe which was producing these microwaves? So it was reason that the Big Bang in the Big Bang Theory must have scattered not only the matter that condensed into galaxies, but also released a tremendous amount of radiation. So with the proper instrumentation, the radiation should be detectable. Now the Big Bang released this radiation about 300,000 years after the initial point of formation, as the electromagnetic radiation up until that point was trapped by matter. So in the universe sufficiently cool for matter and radiation to decouple, this occurred when the combination of protons and electrons formed neutral atoms. Now this radiation is then found in all directions, it is cosmic. It can be considered that the universe has its own black body radiation curve, with a curve of a peak temperature of 3 Kelvin. So where did this come from? Why is this radiation first released by uh, the Big Bang a microwave and not a gamma wave? Well, originally the Big Bang released a high amount of energy as gamma waves, but over the time the universe expanded, the wavelengths of the waves increased by a, gamma, by a redshift, so this turned our gamma waves into microwaves, and therefore we can observe this microwave radiation from anywhere on Earth when pointed towards space. So this evidence proved the Big Bang theory. So it's important important to note that we call this the cosmological microwave background because it's found everywhere in space in, in the microwave background. It is evidence that provide that proved the Big Bang Theory. Now as the universe continues to expand in the future, so will the energy of the cosmic microwave background. So millions of years this will be the cosmic radio wave background as it will expand into the radio spectrum. Now this is also why space is not at absolute zero, it's 2.7 Kelvin because it's heated by this cosmic microwave background so the fabric of the universe is still being heated by the afterglow of the Big Bang so like we said before it can be considered the universe has its own black body radiation curve with a peak temperature of 2.7 Kelvin so the cosmic microwave background is the same in all directions showing it must have originated from a single starting point of creation so the cosmic microwave background is the one of the most important discoveries ever made by humanity as it gave us proof that the universe was created by a Big Bang, it is experimental evidence for the Big Bang Theory. So here is, an, is this cosmic microwave background as shown by a satellite in 2018. It's the earliest possible picture of our universe. Now according to traditional physics, the CMB should be constant, however quantum mechanics causes fluctuations in the CMB when our universe is very small. So the areas of high density in the CMB went on to form galaxies, the areas of low density went on to form voids. However on the whole, the CMB is mostly isotropic tropic and homogeneous, which is in compliance with our cosmological principle. And there's a final piece of evidence for the hot Big Bang model. So in the early universe, the conditions of the universe were extremely hot and extremely dense. Now these conditions were high enough for fusion to occur. So this caused the first protons, hydrogen, to fuse into helium. So this meant that the early universe was made of hydrogen and of helium, which is an important idea. However, over time, the universe cooled when it expanded. So this meant that fusion could no longer occur. So this meant that the universe would only have hydrogen and helium until the first stars were made. Now the Big Bang model predicts at the rate of expansion there's only enough time to make 25% of the universe helium and there's not enough time to produce any larger elements. So the universe where no stars are present is found to be 75% hydrogen and 25% helium. So this is further experimental proof of the hot Big Bang model. That the universe then expanded and cooled too rapidly for the creation of larger nuclei resulted in a relative abundance of hydrogen and helium spread uniformly throughout the universe and there's a lack of larger elements, which is consistent with observation. So our experimental proof of the Big Bang comes in three forms. Evidence 1. Redshift. The universe is expanding. 
This must have been caused by the creation of matter at the beginning of time. Evidence 2. The cosmic microwave background. It is radiation coming from all parts of the universe when the universe cools sufficiently for matter and radiation to decouple with a combination of protons and electrons forming neutral atoms. And this radiation has been redshifted into the microwave region as our universe has expanded. And finally, the relative abundance of hydrogen and helium. The conditions of the Big Bang resulted in the production of helium from fusing hydrogen. Now fusion stopped as the universe expanded and cooled resulting in a relative abundance of hydrogen and helium in a ratio of 3 to 1. So we should be able to have a qualitative treatment of the Big Bang theory including evidence from the cosmological microwave background radiation and the relative abundance of hydrogen and helium. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson we should be able to recognize the Big Bang theory in relation to Hubble's law of a cosmological redshift and understand the evidence for the Big Bang Theory including redshift, the CMB and the abundance of hydrogen and helium. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the Big Bang Model which is part of the astrophysics topic in AQA A-Level Physics. Thank you very much for watching and as always have a lovely day.